Hallelujah. Shall we bless the Lord? Shall we bless the Lord? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we give God a praise? We're grateful for another day. We bless the name of Jesus. We give him all of the glory. Lord, we thank you for another opportunity to come into your presence one more time. We don't take this moment lightly. Hallelujah. We give you our best today. Hallelujah.
At this time, we're going to go into corporate prayer. Hallelujah, Jesus. If we could all bow our heads and close our eyes and join in unity, hallelujah, and lift our voices to Jesus, hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we come before you even now. We bless you. We honor you, Jesus. There is no one like you. There is no one beside you. You hold all power in your hand. Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Who can make war with you? Nobody, Jesus. You are the victor. You are the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah, Lord Jesus. We bless you and we honor you in this place today, Lord God. We welcome your presence here. We ask that you take full control, God. We ask that you orchestrate the service to move as you please, as you desire, Jesus. Jesus. We have your divine way, Lord God. We pray that you be in each and every area of the service from the beginning straight to the end, Lord God. I pray that you be with the praise team. I pray that you be with the musicians, Lord God, that we will sing a song, Lord God, that is pleasing to you, Lord God, that is pleasing to your ears. Lord, I pray for each and every person that is here. Bless them, Lord God, and those that are on their way. Lord Jesus, those who were not able to make it, I pray that you remember them, that you stretch your power to them, Lord Jesus, that you stretch your hand to them Lord God and meet them where they are Lord Jesus open the windows of heaven Lord God and pour down a blessing be with the speaker today Lord Jesus as he brings the word that it will be relevant Lord Jesus that it will be powerful Lord God and that at the end of it all that you will get the glory that you will get the praise Lord Jesus bring people back to you Lord God those that have backslidden Lord Jesus bring them back those that are needing healing Lord Jesus I pray that you shower down your healing those Lord God that are in need of a touch from you Lord Jesus Hear our humble cry and do not pass us by. We love you, Lord Jesus, and we appreciate you for who you are. We thank you for what you're about to do in this place. And we bless you. We say thank you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles, we will be turning to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51 to 58. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 51 to 58. And we will read alternately. When you have it, please say amen. Amen. Sorry. And it reads, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 58, we'll read together. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Can we put a praise on that? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Our labor is not in vain. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to lift up the name of Jesus even higher in this place.
on to me hallelujah so we bless him we give him all of the praise we give him our worship hallelujah because he's worthy of our worship hallelujah he's been too good for us to hold back our praise and he inhabits the praises of his people so we want him to dwell here hallelujah jesus we bless you god You are worthy, no one can worship you for me, for all the things you've done for me, and no one can worship you for me. So we sing, here's my worship, all of my worship, receive my worship, all of my worship, oh, here's my worship, hallelujah, all of my worship, receive my worship.
worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here is my worship. together and bless him everybody come on bless him Je come on bless the name of Jesus come on bless the name of Jesus come on there's power in the name of Jesus we came to give him glory come on we came to give him praise come on somebody clap those hands and magnify God hallelujah hallelujah glory to God Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we bless your name, Jesus. We bless your name, Jesus. We bless your name, Jesus. Ah, we bless your name, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, somebody give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we're so glad. Amen. We rejoice, and we're so glad to be here today. Amen. We thank God for everyone. Please remain standing. We are going to be getting into, amen, our baby dedication service right now. We have two wonderful, wonderful children. Amen. Two young boys that we'll be dedicating today. Amen. Put your hands together for these children that are about to come. Amen. We're going to, amen, ask Sister Omega to lead us, amen, in song as the mother and father, amen, with the children uh, make their way in the sanctuary. How sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the pride and, and feel the pride and the joy and joy that he gave. But greater still, but greater still, the come ashore. together and bless his name I'm gonna ask you to please remain standing until after I've read the dedication scripture then you may be seated children are love gifts given to us from God Psalm 127 says that children are inheritance of the Lord and the fruit of the womb is his reward the, the, the dedication of a child is more than simply praying a prayer of blessing it is dedicating the parents the family and the God parents in the task of raising these children and so as we dedicate our children we're making a vow to raise them in the fear of God and we must do everything we can to make sure our children are covered our scripture comes to us from the book of St. Mark chapter number 10 verses 13 through 16 and they brought young children to him that he should touch them and his disciples rebuked those that brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased and said unto them, Suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. And he took them up in his arms put his hands upon them and bless them. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. 
Now, I know COVID-19 has changed the way we do baby dedication. Some parents are not too happy with me because their children don't get the nice walk down the aisle. But after COVID, we'll bring all the children back that we have blessed and we'll walk them or do something like that. Nevertheless, amen, I'll pray for them. The Bible says he took them up in his arms, put his hands upon them and blessed them. So I'm going to put my hands upon them and I'll pronounce a blessing upon them. You know, we make every precaution we can, but we still don't forget the power of the blood of Jesus. And so we don't come in fear, we come in faith and confidence. Amen. Today we have our own Sister Carrie Ann Latoya Roden and Brother Marlon Anthony Roden with their son Cameron Anthony Reed Roden to be presented unto the Lord. Put your hands together for little Cameron today. We also have to my right Clarissa Alida Nira Richards and Ryan Dillion Smith with their son Anthony Dillion Isaiah Smith to be presented unto the Lord. Put your hands together for that family for young Anthony. Amen. Accompanying these parents, we have the children, godparents, as well as many family members and friends. Parents, I encourage you to love God with every ounce and fiber of your energy and teach your son to do the same. As you love and worship God, you'll model before your son the wonderful love of God that he will want for himself. So I'm going to ask the parents just to slightly turn and face me. Amen. And listen to this question. Is this your earnest desire that your child be dedicated unto God to grow in the nature and the admonition of the Lord? If that's your desire, parents, could you respond with, this is my desire. To allow your son to walk in the abundant life of Christ, do you promise to commit yourselves to dependence upon God to fulfill your parental duties? Will you pray for your son, teach, train, discipline, and encourage them, and conduct your own life that demonstrates goodly and godly living to, before your son? If that's your intention, could you respond with, I hereby promise? All right, we have some godparents. If the godparents are not up here and you're in the congregation, I'm going to ask you to stand if I call your name. So for Cameron, uh, modeling this kind of love cannot be done alone. That's why the parents have these godparents. And so for Cameron, we have Bridget Swaby. Is she here? All right. Uh, we have Althea Drummond. All right. We have Keisha Cole. Not here yet. Jeremy James. I see Jeremy. Garfield Wilson. I see Garfield. And O'Brien McKenzie. Amen. As Godparents. Put your hands together for Godparents for Cameron. My God. You know, it sounds like he's surrounded by the Secret Service over here. Praise God. Look at them. Amen. You know, with all the mask thing. <laughs> We only need glasses now. Likewise, we have Jalissa Brown, amen, uh, Tatiana White, uh, Darnell Bailey, and Neville Williams, amen, as designated godparents for Anthony. So he has a battalion as well, as well, but just don't see all of them. Put your hands together for the godparents. Godparents, this is to you. In the course of living, family experience, crisis situations, as well as joyous situations. Children go through various stages of growth, maturity, and development. At such time, parents may need godparents to encourage and strengthen them. These parents have asked you that you be available to share in the joy of seeing their sons grow up and be there for them for strength in times of concern. Do you promise, godparents, to, to maintain a close relationship with this family? Lend a compassionate and listening heart to these parents to pray for this family. And without interfering, encourage your godchild to excel socially, academically, and spiritually. Godparents, if that's your intention, could all the godparents respond with together? I hereby promise. Finally, I'd like to charge all the family members, friends, and members of Kingdom Life to consider your role and involvement in the life of Cameron and Anthony. I charge you to live an exemplary life before these children, one that will point them in the direction of Christ as they grow up in a very corrupt and evil society. Amen. No man is an island. No man stands alone. I'm going to invite everyone to stand. We're going to get ready to anoint um, these children with oil. Amen. And we have a little new system today. Amen. We have small vials of anointing oil that's been consecrated. And we'll use that. And we'll, you'll get to keep the rest of it. Praise God for your sons. Praise God. Anointing fall on me. Anointing set me free. Set Oh, 
you, Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, for your dedication. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, your dedication. I guess I'm out. Jesus, like this. Shall we bow our heads? Eternal God and our Father, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, you are the altogether lovely. God, we give you praise, we give you glory, and we give you honor. I thank you for Cameron, and I thank you for Anthony. Lord God, these two young boys that you have kept in their mother's womb, you brought them up a proper child. Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for keeping them, Lord God, up to this point. And as they are now in your house, Lord God, we pray, God, that you'll cover them from the crown of their heads to the sole of their feet with your power and your anointing. I pray, God, you'll keep them by day and by night. Keep them from sicknesses and from diseases that would attempt to attack their body. I pray, Lamb of God, that you'll bless them. Oh God, that they will grow up in this evil society. Lord God, to be a proper young man, young man. Lord God, bless them when they go through the school systems. I pray you'll bless them with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Bless every teacher that shall instruct them. Every, every friend that they shall have. Lord God, when they go through school, help them, Lord God, to excel. Lord God, when they reach the age of understanding, Lord God, help them to give their life to you and serve you in spirit and in truth. I pray for their mother and their fathers. I pray, God, that their home will be a home of comfort, a home of blessing, and a home of peace. Lord God, I pray, God, that you'll keep them, Lord God, as the apple of your eye. Mighty God, I pray that there'll be abundance, Lord God, in their homes. Lord Jesus, bless their godparents, their grandparents. If they have siblings, oh God, Lord God, bless their siblings. I pray you keep them by day and by night. Send your guardian angels, oh God, by day and by night around them. Lord God, I commit them into your hand. Let your blessing rest upon Anthony. Lord God, from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. Let your blessing rest upon Cameron. Lord God, from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. I place power upon them right now. I place deliverance and glory upon them right now. I place your peace, God, upon them right now. I declare your anointing upon them right now. And I pray, Lamb of God, that Lord God, your power and your strength will matriculate in their lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, we give you praise, glory, and honor, and we thank you. In Jesus' name. Somebody bless him for me. Can you stretch your hands to Anthony and say, The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Amen. Stretch your hands to Cameron. Say, The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. And to the two children, you are blessed. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Bless you, Cameron. Bless you, Cameron. You're blessed in the name of Jesus. Look at him looking at me. He loves me. Praise God. Anthony. Bless you, Anthony. Bless you. You're blessed in the name of Jesus. I know you don't like the mask, but when you can see me properly, you like me. Praise God. Put your hands together for these two wonderful boys. Every day. Is a day of thanksgiving. My God's been good. God's been so good to me. Every day He's blessing me. Every day is a day of thanksgiving. Take the time to glorify the Lord. COVID has scrambled my brain. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. Praise God. Okay. This is your certificate. God bless you. 
Thank you for choosing Kingdom Life Ministries to bless your handsome and wonderful son. God bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you for choosing Kingdom Life Ministries. This is your certificate of blessing for our handsome Cameron. Thank you for choosing Kingdom Life. God bless you in Jesus' name. I have a set of keys belonging to Sashana Roden. Put your hands together for her. I mean, I've been blessing so many keys since last week. So God has been good even in the midst of COVID-19. Bow your heads with me, Father, in the precious and the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for Sashana Roden, Lord God, for allowing her to purchase this vehicle. And she has brought the keys into your house, Lord God, to be dedicated. We pray right now in the name of Jesus that you'll bless her, Lord God, her family, Lord God, the vehicle itself, when she drives, that Lord God, she be covered and protected. I pray God that you'll keep her by day and by night on the busy highways, on the roadways, keep her from accidents, from trouble, from danger, from Lord God, dangers that she doesn't even see. Lord God, and I pray, Lord God, that wherever this vehicle takes her, she'll be sheltered and protected. I pray you'll bless her financially with every obligation attached to this vehicle. I pray, Lord God, you'll continue to multiply her blessings. In the name of Jesus Christ, we give you praise. Amen. All right. So I'm saying I am determined to hold on to the end until I get myself together here. I am determined to hold out to the end.
to hold out. Anybody determined in spite of all that is going on? Our scripture takes us to the book of 1 Corinthians. And I'll be using one verse. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 58. Before we get to that verse, allow me to greet our assistant pastor, Elder Weston Richards, Elder Wayne Levers, Minister Darcy Davis, Minister Kareen Smith, Minister Baker, and Minister Harper, to all our evangelists, officers, deacons, all those that are working in ministry, greetings in Jesus' name. It's good to have with us today Apostle Peter Dyke. Stand, sir. And Sister Leah, praise God. Good to have you with us. You will hear more about him later on. Praise God. Praise God. God has brought him and sent him to be connected. And I thank God for what he's doing. Stand with me just for one more time. I'm, I mean, I don't have a lot of time to explore the word. Because as you know, our service times are a little bit shorter. This is the first service. We've got to get ready for the second service after this. But everybody read with me the verse that is up on the screen. Let us read together. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain father in the precious name of Jesus oh God speak a word to us today send your anointing upon me I need you Lord give me clarity of understanding oh God help me to expound your word with confidence with clear speech I praise you for those who are listening whether they are on social media facebook youtube or they're in the sanctuary let a word resonate in their spirit right now in jesus name before you take your seat just look around help me announce the theme in the atmosphere just shout out around you look around and say it's not easy but it's worth it come on just shout it out to somebody that may not even hear you tell them it's not easy but it's worth it Anybody believe it's worth it? Hala, it's worth it. You may be seated. It's worth it, church. When you study the book of 1 Corinthians, you will realize that this group of Christian men and women that were serving the Lord in Corinth over 2,000 years ago, they had many reasons to be discouraged at times. They, like other Christians throughout the years, discovered that the Christian walk at times get very, very hard. Many members of this church over the years have gotten tired and weary. Some managed to hold on, pressing their way. Others have given up on God. But it's important to understand that in the first century, unlike today, when a person gave his or her life to the Lord, they suffered in many ways from the start. Many of them lost their jobs, their social standing, their homes, and even their families because at that time, Christianity was not popular. And when you became a Christian, you went against the grains, amen, of Judaism. And so within the church at Corinth, you have people, real people like you and I, who had hopes, who had dreams. Many of them had given up a lot for the Lord. They had given up everything that they knew. But they also found that life was not easy. 
that life in the church was not a bowl of cherries neither was it a bed of roses there were so many good and godly people in the church at Corinth who served the Lord faithfully but at the same time Corinth was a place that was filled with all types of hypocrisy, idolatry, sexual promiscuity. There were quarreling, jealousy, divisions, boasting, lewdness, and all types of hypocrisy was in the church. So in the midst of people that were worshiping God, you had Corinthian brethren who came out of all kinds of behaviors and they were even practicing those behaviors in the same church and so for those who meant God it was beating them down it was crushing their spirit and some of them wondered at times with tears in their eyes where is the Lord where is the fellowship where is the sincerity where is the uh, 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 where is the deliverance and sometimes if you were to look at some folks even in the church you would want to give up and backslide and run away but I thank God sisters and brothers that even though there are struggles in the church there is still deliverance in the church sisters and brothers even though the church itself was suffering tremendous hardship and challenges but yet there is a God who is able to keep us in the middle of our struggles and so in Corinth you had internal conflicts that were affecting the people of God but if that was not enough not only did they have trouble within but they also had trouble from without because they were suffering Roman and Jewish persecution and the Jews were persecuting them because they did not believe that Jesus was really the Messiah and they were leaving the Judaism doctrine to go to the Jesus only doctrine and the Romans they always persecuted anybody that was not Roman and as a result it got hard for them to worship it got hard for them to feed their families and now the Apostle Paul is writing to them and is telling them that things are going to get worse because the persecution is going to get harder the fire is going to get hotter and there is a storm on the horizon and so without doubt many people at the church in Corinth they were discouraged they were tired they were weary and they were worn and some of them were even wondering whether or not the Christian life was really really worth it is it really worth my effort is it really worth my sacrifice or should I just throw in the towel and quit and brothers and sisters the tides of discouragement they were just rolling in because it was tough times for the church in Corinth I don't know about you but it's tough times for the church in this society and many of us are so discouraged some of us are afraid and we can't understand what we are going through because real problems affect real people can I talk it like I feel it and real people will cry when they have problem don't tell me uh, that I should be just praising God every day uh, amen I'm a real human being uh, and real human being uh, amen experience real discouragement uh, you, know, you got to go through hard times uh, real people get hurt uh, real people get discouraged uh, and I don't 
know where you are right now uh, in your Christian race. Uh, I don't know how well things are going for you right now. Uh, I don't know if you're tired uh, of fighting the good fight of faith. Uh, maybe you're still moving fast. Uh, maybe you're still swinging hard. Uh, but maybe you're up against the ropes. Uh, maybe your arms are tired. Uh, maybe you're wondering uh, if church is really worth it. Uh, maybe you're thinking, uh, holy God, uh, of throwing in the towel uh, because it seems uh, like the best option right now. Uh, but God has sent me on an assignment this morning uh, to let the church know uh, that you cannot afford to quit. Uh, it may not be easy right now, uh, but salvation is worth it. Uh, uh, somebody clap your hands uh, and give him praise. It may not be easy, uh, but it is worth it. Uh, can I talk from a personal experience? Uh, go to God. Uh, amen. Christians get discouraged. Uh, even leaders. Uh, amen. Sometimes uh, I don't want to be a pastor. Uh, sometimes uh, I don't want to come to church. Uh, sometimes I don't want to preach to you all. Uh, oh God, help me to preach this message today. Uh, sometimes uh, I wonder if all my efforts in kingdom life uh, for the last 21 years uh, if it's just a waste of time uh, am I making progress uh, or am I just spinning my wheels uh, because there are many reasons uh, and many things that happen uh, in your life uh, and in my life uh, to make us discouraged uh, maybe you're here today uh, and you've been a member of kingdom life uh, for a long time uh, Maybe you have given this work uh, your time and your talents and your treasure. Maybe you did not get the recognition uh, that you really, really deserved. Uh, maybe you did not get a pat on the back uh, like other people did. Uh, maybe you did not even get uh, a simple encouragement uh, that you really deserved. Uh, I feel like preaching this uh, because I can hear in my spirit uh, God is saying to me uh, to tell somebody that maybe you have been overlooked maybe you have been criticized maybe you have been ostracized maybe you have been pushed aside maybe you are looking at kingdom life and comparing this church to other churches and you're feeling like kingdom life could be further along maybe you feel that you should be further ahead and so you're wondering if our efforts are worth it and the tides of frustrations and the ties of discouragement uh, is just plaguing your mind uh, when you go to bed at night uh, you're still wondering uh, oh lord my god uh, what is going to happen uh, where is my future uh, where is the future of the church uh, there are many sources uh, because everybody get discouraged uh, we are a lot of times tempted uh, to throw in the towel uh, and i come by to let you know uh, that don't give up just yet because it's still worth it your troubles are worth it your pain is worth it your prayers are worth it your fasting is worth it soon and very soon the tide is going to change soon and very soon your situation is going to change soon and very soon God is getting ready to turn it around is there anybody here that I've made up your mind that I am determined to fight a good fight of faith though he slay me and the Boshaya like Job yet will I trust him all the days of my appointed time I'm gonna wait till my changes come somebody wave your hand in the air and shall I am determined because my salvation is worth it my praise is worth it uh, clap your hands uh, and give him praise somebody shout hallelujah somebody shout hallelujah amen brothers and sisters we all get discouraged at times we all wonder if it's really worth the effort but I'm here to tell you that in the church in Corinth 
there were people there, like we are today, trapped in the dungeons of discouragement. And Paul wanted those people to know that there is a way out. He wants them to know that the fight is worth fighting. That the race is worth running. That the Christian life is worth living. And so in our main text today, in verse 58, Paul tells the church how to overcome discouragement. Paul addresses them as their brothers. My beloved, therefore, my beloved brethren, you can just sense Paul's emotion as he shares this verse with them. My beloved brothers, my beloved sisters, I love you, Masha. I care about you. And you're part of my family. Pastor, I see your struggle. I see Kobo Shatalabahaya. I see your pain. I see the anguish. I see the trial. Amen. I may not see it, sisters. Amen. But tell your neighbor, God sees it. God sees it. You're my children in the faith. I understand that it's tough. I know what you're going through. I have suffered great hardships myself. But you need to stand firm. You need to stand firm. Let nothing separate you from the love of God. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be you steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know, They may not like you, but your labor will never be in vain. Can I give it to you from the Amplified? Therefore, my beloved brothers and sisters, be steadfast and unmovable, always excelling in the work of the Lord, always doing your best and doing more than that which is needed. <laughs> being continually aware that your labor even to the point of exhaustion in the Lord is not futile nor wasted it is never without purpose is there any about Shanda Bakosaya Listen, I'm almost done. Huh? But if there's anybody here huh, that know your praise have purpose, huh? if you know your salvation have purpose, huh? jump on your feet huh? and say it's worth it. Huh? Is there anybody here huh, that knows your journey huh? is worth the fight, huh? it's worth the pain, huh? it's worth the struggle? Somebody Somebody it's worth it. It's worth it. You can't shake me. You can't move me. I'm steadfast. Somebody holla, hold your grounds. Somebody say, hold your grounds. Hold your grounds. Three things. One, be steadfast. That means you're fixed in faith. Two, two be unmovable. That means I'm unshakable. Three, always abounding in the work of the Lord. I mean, keep working, keep ushering. 
Keep singing. Keep playing. Keep testifying. Keep preaching. Keep doing whatever you're doing. They don't like how you preach, keep preaching. They don't like how you sing, keep singing. They don't like how you dance, keep dancing. Is there anybody here? You did not come to qualify anybody's opinion of you. I don't really care if you like how I do it. I'm not here for you. I'm here for the kingdom. I come back to let somebody know. People want to move you. People want to set you apart. But I declare that I'm steadfast. I'm steadfast. I'm unmovable. You cannot get me to quit. You cannot get me to throw in the towel. Is there anybody here that's left in Pentecost that realize that the weapons of your warfare is not to give in to what people say. But I praise him. I shout. I sing. I dance. Because I'm unmovable. You can't move me. You can't get rid of me. You can't push me out. You can't sit me down. I've made up my mind. I've made up my mind. Is there anybody here that knows it's worth it? Your praise is worth it. Then Job said, though he slay me, I'm going to trust him. Somebody shout it's worth it. <laughs> Stand your ground. Nabushaya. <laughs> Ay, 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 I'm almost done. Stand your ground. Don't hold back. Let nobody move you, not even pastor. Throw yourself in the work of the kingdom. This is not a waste of time or a waste of effort. Your victory will compensate for your pain. Keep teaching that Sunday school class. Keep working in your church. Keep sharing your faith. Keep singing your song. Keep testifying. Keep on fasting. Keep on praying. It's worth it. Mm. I don't know how else to preach this for you to get it. Ah, if you still don't get it yet let me try another method can I carry you back to 57 a new body is awaiting you no more pain no more hurting no more sorrows no more tears no more heartbreaks no more sickness no more disease no more covid no more coronavirus you don't need no more flu shot you don't need to go to the doctor and if you're here today i come by to let you know that you may not it may not seem like you're doing much but it's worth it it may not seem like you've accomplished much but it's worth it somebody said you've been in church a long time Time. By now, you should have had a position. I want to let you know, amen, I'm not working for a position. I'm working for a crown. Can I preach it like I feel it? Is there anybody here that's more interested in a crown than a position? Amen, you just give God praise. You may not get what you're looking for in kingdom life, but soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. You keep your position. I want the crown. Is there anybody here that's that's willing to give up the position to get the crown? You keep the title. Just give me the crown. You keep the promotion. Just give me the crown. Somebody jump on your feet and give God a one-time praise. Give God a two-time praise. Give a three time praise open up your mouth and holler it's worth it come on somebody
somebody praise him come on somebody praise him holiday is worth it come on somebody holiday is worth it somebody praise him it's worth it it's not easy i say it's not easy i say it's not easy but it's worth it Stand with me, everybody. I'm done. Ay, abosha, tarabahaya. I just can't give up now. I've come too far from where I started. Somebody help me sing this song. I just can't give up now. I, I just, just can't give Anybody up mean it? Now. Anybody mean it today? I've come too far. I've come too far from where I started from. Somebody said no. Sing it softly. I just can't give up now. I just brothers and sisters. If you're in this sanctuary today and you'd like me to pray with you, whatever the reason is, there's about seven or eight spots at this altar. Why don't you come and take one of those spots? I pray that God will strengthen you in this race. Is there somebody else? Take one of these spots at the altar. He brought me this far to leave me. Oh, I, I just we have a couple more spots. I want to pray for you. I want to pray with you. I've come too far. If there's anybody else, come now. From where I Jesus knows you can't afford to give up. Nobody you can't afford to quit. Glory to God. And I don't believe. He brought me. He brought me this I'm going to get ready to pray for those at the altar. Oh, listen to me. It doesn't matter what you're going through everybody it doesn't matter what you're facing it may not be easy but your pastor is here to tell you this afternoon that it's worth it it's worth the fight it's worth the struggle it's worth the pain it's worth the discouragement God will bring you through it God will excel you through this God will take you higher through this Precious name of Jesus. Here are your children standing at this altar, Lord. God, they believe that you're able to do for them exceedingly abundantly above that they ask or even think of according to the power that worketh in them. I pray, God, right now, every single one of them. God, I don't know what they're going through. I don't know the struggle. I don't know the pain. But I speak freedom in the spirit. I speak deliverance in the spirit. I pray, God, that you'll set them free from bondage. Lord God, whatever struggle they're facing, whatever battle they're fighting, Lord God, right now, in the name of Jesus, 
I pray you'll overshadow them with your anointing, with your power, with your victory. Give them that satisfying deliverance that they need right now. Send forth your glory. Send forth your presence. Send forth your praise. In the name of Jesus, I release joy in their life. I release satisfaction in their life. I release strength in their life. I release power in their life. I release anointing in their life. I release deliverance in their life right now in the name of Jesus. Everybody clap your hands and give God praise. God bless you. As you go back to your seat, go back in victory. Go back in deliverance. Go back believing that you will make it and I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me Give God a praise. Let's give God a praise. I don't believe He's brought me this far to leave me. What a word today. It's not easy, but it is worth it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. How many of us know that it is worth it to serve the Lord? Praise the Lord. On behalf of our pastor, Bishop Barrington Smith, and our First Lady, Minister Kareen Smith. We would like to thank you for being with us in the sanctuary and watching us virtually. Please continue to check our Kingdom Life Facebook and Instagram pages for all upcoming online and sanctuary services. Reminder, our new times for our prayer line are as follows, Mondays at 7.30 p.m., Tuesday, Thursday, and Fridays at 5 a.m. Please note, on the Wednesdays when there is no Bible studies, we will be having prayer at 7.30 p.m. Our weekly live online sessions on Facebook and YouTube are as follows. Wednesday, August 19th, 2020, we'll be having our interactive Bible studies at 7.30 p.m. Unfiltered live session with Bishop and First Lady Smith will be Saturday, August 29th, 2020 on Facebook and YouTube. Registration for next Sunday will be opened at 10.30 a.m. Please visit our website at www.klife.ca and click the link for registration or visit our Facebook page at Kingdom Life Ministries. For more information, please email us at info at kingdom at klife.ca. Registration will only be open until Thursday, 11.59 p.m. Once you have completed the registration process, you will immediately receive a confirmation email confirming that you have successfully completed your registration. Please note, if you have not received a confirmation email, you have not successfully registered. In that case, please email us at klifesignup at gmail.com. A reminder email is scheduled to be sent out on Friday, reminding you of the service you are registered for. We ask that if you are unable to be in attendance in the sanctuary to the services, please continue to worship with us on 
all our social media platforms, which is Facebook, YouTube, and our website via live stream. If you would like to sow a seed into this ministry or to give your tithes and offering, please go to our website at www.klife.ca and select the online giving option. Or you can e-transfer by sending your donation by email to donations at klife.ca. If you prefer to mail your donation by check, please mail it to K Kingdom Life Ministries, 1166 Cardiff Boulevard in the city of Mississauga. Postal code is L5S1P7. If you would like to set up a payment via online banking, please contact Sister Eliever Baker via email at ebaker at klife.ca for, for more information and an account number. Please keep in prayer Sister Jennifer Roach, who had to make an emergency trip to Jamaica to see her mother, who is very sick in the hospital. Saving the, it, the upcoming dates, we'll be having our Holy Communion service on Sunday, August the 30th at 6.30 p.m. Praise God. There will be no foot washing and only 100 people are able to attend in the sanctuary. You will have to register. An email and flyer was sent this week with details. If you did not receive the email, please contact us at info at klife.ca to add your name to our mailing list. The ICEA Region 2 Virtual Conference will be held on September 18th and 19th. Please stay tuned for more details. Please be reminded that we at Kingdom Life Ministries continue to practice social and physical distancing, follow the health and safety protocols, which include the wearing of masks to ensure that we protect ourselves and others. After the benediction, we will be dismissing the sanctuary by seating sections. We're gonna ask everyone to please remain seated and wait for the direction of the ushers. Thank you. As we are about to close our service at this moment, we're asking everyone to please stand. And as we raise our right hand, we will recite our benediction. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the throne of his glory with exceeding great joy to the only wise God, our savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. We're so glad you were able to join us to worship today. We trust your hearts were blessed by the word of God. God is such an awesome God. And because of his mercy and grace, that's why we're here. And so, as we continue through the week, we pray that God will bless you and strengthen you. But please don't forget to register for our services next week. Registration is open now and is available until Thursday at 11.59 p.m. Go online on our website, www.klive.ca, or on our Instagram page, or on Facebook. Register and join us in worship on next week's Sunday. God bless you.